my students in this lecture first i am going to discuss how resistivity and resistance change with temperature let us see so resistance so first focus on resistivity resistivity at temperature t is given by rho naught into 1 plus alpha t where rho naught is a resistivity at temperature 0 degree centigrade and rho t it is it is at t degree centigrade and if you are taking for resistance and in this alpha is known as temperature coefficient of resistivity it is known as temperature temperature coefficient of resistivity In the same way, coming to resistance, resistance at temperature T is equal to R naught into 1 plus alpha T. And again, same terminology, R naught at 0, RT is at T degree centigrade and coming to alpha. If you are taking change in temperature is a small, means if dimensions of the resistor, like its length, cross-section area, if it changes in their dimensions are small, in that case, coefficient of resistance and temperature coefficient of resistivity both will be same. I am repeating. Here alpha is known as temperature coefficient of resistivity and this is that of resistance. And both are equal if change in dimensions are small. Okay. okay. And here alpha is positive. Alpha is positive for metals or you can say conductors. It is a positive and negative. <clears throat> alpha is negative for semiconductors. So here conductors, this is for semiconductors. And see what is meaning of that. Resistance pause to means resistance increases with the temperature. Okay. Alpha negative means resistance decreasing with the temperature. <laughs> So in case of metals, what happens is electrons making collisions with the positive ions. That is a cause of resistance. When we increase the temperature, the positive ions vibrate with the more amplitudes. So electrons will make more number of collisions with those positive ions. So since making more number of collisions, having more resistance for flow of current. That's why alpha is a positive for metals. But coming to semiconductors, which have very less number of free electrons. So here what happens is, when temperature is increased, bonds will be broken. So since bonds are broken, we get now more number of free electrons. That means with increase of temperature, conductivity increases. That means resistivity decreases or you can say resistance decreases. So that is the cause of resistance in case of semiconductors. Okay. Let us see now next one. So next one is it is about battery. <clears throat> Let us see what is a battery and its role. 
earlier we have seen that connecting a conducting wire connecting a conducting wire so we have seen that take a bulb now connect a bulb to a conducting wire like this so we have seen that bulb does not glow by connecting to conducting wire like this we are knowing that electrons moving randomly in all directions at the high speeds still bulb is not glowing so conclusion is that random motion does not contribute to current now we are inserting a battery when we insert a battery current flows and the bulb is glowing so now we are focusing what exactly happening here so coming to circuit symbol for battery so taking two lines of in unequal length this is a plus and this is minus indicating that this is a high potential and this is low potential so role of batteries to provide a potential difference it maintains a potential difference so because of that charges move so we have learned earlier that charges move because of potential difference so if potential difference is now given by the battery you just imagine here a resistor connect here one resistor across the battery or you can see in the place of this you can take a bulb then we can see that bulb glows that means current is flowing so here what we are saying that we are not focusing the random motion of electrons so before connecting battery electrons not moving it means drift velocity equal to zero i am repeating before connecting battery electrons are not moving its meaning is that drift velocity is zero means even though there is no battery electrons moving randomly in all directions and because of that there is no current that's why we are not focusing random motion okay and once battery connected this is a providing a potential difference this is providing potential difference so here what we can say is here we take one assumption that these connecting wires having no resistance so this connecting wire and here this connecting wire for these two connecting wires there is no resistance then what we can say is potential at this point so take it as point 1 and this is a point for point 1 and point 2 potential same in the same way for point 3 and for point 4 potentials are same because we are taking the assumption that the connecting wires having no resistance right okay. now here what happens is electrons sorry we are taking here positive charge positive charge flows now from high potential to low potential here two corresponds to high potential and four corresponds to low potential so positive charge moves of its own from high potential to low potential so since they are moving high potential to low potential they are losing energy they are losing electric potential energy and on reaching this point so now positive charge reaching low potential now from low potential to high potential they cannot move of their own <laughs> positive charge cannot move from low potential to high potential of its own so here what happens is battery is doing work on the charges battery is doing work on the charges to move them from low potential to high potential so work is done by the battery in moving positive charge from low potential to high potential 
So since they are moving low to high potential, they are gaining electric potential energy. So again, they move now from high potential to from high potential to low potential. Again, they are losing electric potential energy. And again, they are reaching now this low potential region. Now again, battery is doing work on these positive charges to move them low potential to high potential. Like this, battery maintains a continuous flow of charges. That means current will be there because of this battery. So here, role of battery is to pump charges from low potential to high potential. I am repeating. Here, role of battery is to pump charges from low potential to high potential. And once charge reaching reaching high potential, it moves off its own from high potential to low potential. So here battery role is not there. They can move off their own. But once they reach low potential, again battery has to do work on the charges to move them from low potential to high potential. So finally conclusion is that battery has to do work on the charges to move them from low potential to high potential. And this work done, this work done per unit charge is called EMF of the battery. Notation is epsilon. This work done by the battery per unit charge is called EMF of the battery. So its full form is electromotive force, but it is not a force. It is just like work by charge, means it is just like potential. Okay, now from this, see what we can write. W equal to, from this definition, W equal to epsilon into Q. Now, this work is in the form of electric potential energy. And this potential energy is lost across the resistor. So, energy lost across resistor is equal to energy given by the battery. So if you take ideal battery in the sense, there is no energy loss inside the battery. Then we can say that this epsilon into Q should be equal to across resistor potential difference. It is V. Then we can write it is equal to V into Q where Q equal to I into T, if you take a time interval T, then charge flowing is equal to I into T. So this is the relation if you are assuming that battery is ideal, means there is no energy loss inside the battery. So this entire work is available for this resistor. So here Q gets cancelled. Now from this we are going to get epsilon is equal to V. So we can define EMF of a battery in this way also. That is, EMF of a battery is equal to potential difference across its terminals if battery is ideal. I am repeating, EMF of a battery is equal to potential difference across its terminals if battery is ideal. Okay. Let us see how much energy is lost across the resistor. That is V into Q, right? So in the place of Q writing I into T or in the place of I, we can write I equal to V by R. So it becomes V square by R into T. Our same thing we can write in terms of I and R. That is I square R. In the place of V writing I into R becomes I square R into T. This is the energy lost across the resistor VQ or VIT or V square by R into T or I square RT. Okay. Now differentiate this W. If you differentiate this W that gives that gives power delivered 
by the battery p suffix b means differentiating w with respect to time it means it is the rate at which work is done by the battery means it is a power delivered by the battery that is equal to derivative of this epsilon constant epsilon into dq by dt that is now current okay so epsilon into y this is a power delivered by battery okay suppose battery having resistance i am showing here this is now battery it has some resistance we are showing it separately but remember this is resistance of the battery it is not resistance outside this we are calling as internal resistance of the battery this we are calling as internal resistance of the battery so because of this resistance what happens is some energy will be lost inside the battery this is what we can observe while using batteries and we can say in tv remote or you can say cell phone battery gets heated the reason is that they have some resistance because of that energy will be lost which appears in the form of heat okay see how much energy is lost how much energy is lost inside the battery so here we got energy i square into r into t right now same thing we can write energy lost energy lost inside battery is equal to i square into small r into t okay that means see here we have taken e cube means epsilon q equal to v into q this is for ideal battery but if you take a real battery then we have to write same thing as work done by the battery epsilon into q right or which is equal to epsilon into y into t energy lost i square r t so net value net value is minus i square r t so this is now available for for this resistor means how much energy is available for circuit that is epsilon i t minus i square r t so that is equal to that is equal to v into y t that implies epsilon i am cancelling i and t i t i t epsilon minus i r that is equal to v so this is now general one okay now in this r equal to 0 it is ideal battery then emf is equal to potential difference across its terminals here we can say one more definition that is if i equal to 0 i 0 means circuit is open <laughs> so to have current flow circuit must be closed if circuit is open i value will be 0 then also emf equal to potential difference across its terminals that means emf is also defined as the potential difference across its terminals in open circuit okay right now coming to here we are making calculation at what rate work is done by the battery that is emf into current in the same way at what rate energy is lost inside the battery at what rate and that is given by take derivative of this it becomes i square into r this is the rate at which energy is lost inside the battery next at what rate energy received by the circuit okay i am taking a c c for circuit energy received at what rate energy received by circuit that is equal to that is equal to see where we are having this one yes this is i square into r into t derivative of this okay that becomes now i square into r 
or same thing we can write v into y okay same thing v into y or we can take it as v square by r this is a rate at which energy is received by the circuit okay right now see regarding battery important points and here one more thing that is when current flows like this it is when current flows from low potential to high potential inside the battery then that is what we call discharge of battery this is what we call discharge of battery so when we are using cell phone that lighting is coming from the energy of the battery that is what we call discharge means we are using energy of the battery next one when you are keeping cell phone for charging that means we are charging the battery then current flows in the reverse will like this means current flows from high potential to low potential inside the battery current flows from high potential to low potential inside the battery this is for charging okay this is charging this is discharging in discharging it is v equal to epsilon minus ir in discharging v equal to epsilon minus ir okay right now let us see the important points regarding battery till now what we have discussed let's see points once here so first point battery maintains constant potential difference that helps the charges to flow second battery is not a source of electrons so here students having a misconcept like battery contains so many electrons that is a wrong concept battery just provides potential difference because of that the electrons which are present in conducting wires they move so battery is not providing charges battery just providing potential difference okay next work is done by the battery to move positive charge from low potential to high potential inside the battery okay next definition of emf defined as work done per unit charge next emf also defined as potential difference between terminals in open circuit means current equal to zero next same thing once again ideal battery emf equal to potential difference across its terminals right next during discharge of battery current flows from low potential to high potential inside the battery that means energy taken from battery given to circuit okay during the charging of battery current flows from high potential to low potential inside the battery means energy is taken by battery okay these are some important points regarding battery let us solve problems say first question a piece of copper another of germanium are cooled from room temperature to 80 kelvin it is now cooling the resistance of sas in 88 for one mark we can see copper is a conductor for which alpha goes to germanium semiconductor alpha is negative so decreasing temperature means for copper resistance will decrease germanium since alpha negative resistance will increase okay so, so directly for copper resistance decreases and germanium increases okay very simple and direct one see next one read the statements carefully first one resistivity of semiconductor decreases with increase of temperature resistivity of semiconductor decreases with increase of temperature 
so that is wrong because we are knowing that alpha is negative right alpha negative means wait 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 semiconductor resistivity decreases with increase of temperature as it is correct only because alpha is negative alpha and negative means if t increased resistivity will decrease so y is correct only in a conducting solid rate of collisions between free electrons <coughs> and ions decreases with increase of temperature rate of collisions between free electrons and ions increases with increase of temperature that means resistance increases because alpha is positive right means both are correct only asked in 1993 for two marks see options so here both are correct so y and z dot two right see next one <clears throat> A steady current flows in a metallic conductor of non-uniform cross-section. The quantity or quantities constant along the length of the conductor as per one mark in 1997. See which quantities are constant along the length of the conductor. It is going to study flow non-uniform cross-section. Okay, if you are taking non-uniform cross section, asking current, electric field, drift speed, right? Let us see once. Non-uniform cross section. One thing is that whatever may be the cross section, uniform, non-uniform, whatever it is, current inside conduct is same everywhere. That is a fixed. Okay, coming to current density. Current density equal to n into q into drift velocity. Current density is simply i by a. i value constant. i value constant, but a is not a constant. That means j. j is not constant. Right? And charge of electron constant. This is number of free electrons per unit volume. This depends on the given substance. So this is a constant for a given substance. So n constant, q constant. But j changing. Since j changing, drift velocity also changes. Okay. Now see options. So current, electric field, drift speed. So current constant, electric field is not constant because by using Ohm's law, J bar equal to sigma into E bar. J bar is not constant. Therefore, E bar is not constant. Drift speed. Again, same logic. J not constant. Therefore, drift speed is not constant. Therefore, only option is it is a D. Only current is a constant. Okay. Next one. 